All right, guys, we're going to continue on reading through Revelation, and we're going to be in Revelation 15 today, so if you want to grab your Bible, we're going to read maybe a few chapters as we continue on, and the one thing that you'll notice as we read along is that the church is not mentioned in, you know, from the rest of the time, and we can see where the rapture and the second coming are two separate events. The rapture is when Jesus comes in the air and we meet him in the air. And the second coming is when he plants his feet on the earth and we are with him when he does that. And another thing that you will notice is that the tribulation is about to end. And this is when the second coming is um, going to be happening. So we're going to be in chapter 15. And it says, I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. These are the tribulation saints. They held harps given given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servants of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are you, your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous act have been revealed. After this I looked, and in heaven the temple, that is, the tabernacle of the testimony, was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chest. The one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke and from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Chapter 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments, you who are and who were the Holy One, because you have so judged, for they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets. And you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond. Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had control over the plagues. But they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues with agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw... Three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They were spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that the Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. 
Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder into the severe and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon and the great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men, and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. Okay, we'll read one more. Chapter 17. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into the desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. This title was written on her forehead. Mystery Babylon the Great the mother of prostitutes, and the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimonies to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw once was, now is not." And will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast. Because he once was, now is not, and yet will come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seventh and is going on, going to his destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war against the lamb, but the lamb will not the lamb will overcome them because he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And with him will be his called chosen and faithful followers. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The um The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. So there was a lot of information just in those few chapters that we read. Um, I know some of it can be kind of confusing, but as we read along, uh, the Lord will give you understanding and he will give you wisdom to know what the word is saying. And the one thing that we can have assurance of and have hope on is that the the saints that are still here will be raptured before any of this stuff takes place. We will be watching from heaven. This is the stuff that the tribulation saints will be going through. And, you know, oftentimes we ask, you know, what is the purpose of the tribulation? You know, is, is God, you know, why is he allowing this to happen? Well, 
he wants the salvation of the Jews and he wants the Jews to um, recognize that he is God. And unfortunately, there are people that are hard hearted and hard headed and they don't want to be any have any part of Christ now. And even though there's been given many, many opportunities and nobody can ever say that they didn't know because God will always, always send somebody or a circumstance or in some way, shape or form, somebody, you know, God will use somebody to speak to you. And so you can't use the excuse that you had, you didn't know. Um, It was because of your prideful heart. It was because of your hard heart that you didn't want to know. And that's your free will. That's your choice. God gives you a choice. And even though he sends people into your life that will share the gospel with you or will try to lead you to Christ or he will give you an opportunity and he gives you plenty, plenty, plenty of chances. But unfortunately, we live in a sinful world and we, and we live in a world where there is death and things happen. And, you know, he says that our, our we're not promised our next breath. And so, you know, if you die in that rejection, that was your choice that you made. And if you are still here when the rapture happens, that was your choice that you made um, because you did not come to him while there was still a chance. And even though there will be chances after the rapture, you know, I, I, I often say if you couldn't put your faith and trust in him now, and you couldn't follow him now, and you rejected him now, what makes you think that it's going to be any different later on? What makes you think that in the tribulation, once everybody disappears, that you're suddenly going to have a change of heart and realize that everything was right and everything was true? Um, If you couldn't live for him now, are you going to be able to die for him then? And, you know, I can tell you this, that With all certainty, with every ounce of my being, I can tell you with assurance that the rapture, number one, is a true event. Number two, that it will happen before the tribulation. And even though there are many who are rapture deniers or want to really argue and fight about it has to be at the end or it has to we have to go through the entire tribulation or um the the rapture is a false doctrine it doesn't say anywhere in the bible that there's a rapture or you know you just want an escape clause or you just want this or you just want that it's it's almost like what are you trying to prove? Are you trying to prove that you're better than everybody else because you made it through? Are you trying to prove that you have more faith than someone else or you're stronger than someone else? You know, when it gets down to it, you know, you, you can't tell me that you wouldn't be fearful in that position, that you wouldn't be nervous and scared in that position when you have people that are powered by Satan coming after you and trying to kill you and trying to force their will upon you. You you can't sit there and tell me that you would not be fearful. And in that same sense, Satan is the one that brings fear. He is the one that implants the fear into people. And fear is not from God. So, you know, what a hope that we can have and what an, uh, a joy that the followers of Christ can have to know that our destination is a one-way ticket home and we are going to heaven, that we will not be here to witness all of this. We will not be here to endure this event that's ha- going to be happening. And might I say, it's going to be happening very, very soon. I don't know the day or the hour, but I can tell you that the events that took place in the Bible at the time of Jesus, 
nothing is new under the sun and everything repeats itself. And at the time of Jesus, the, um, the custom of the Jewish weddings at that time were as he said. And that's why the the disciples understood what he was saying because it was the custom of of the Jews back then and the Jewish wedding feast to um, have a covenant with the bride. The groom, bride and groom would have a covenant. The groom would go away to his father's house to prepare a place. The bride would then prepare her wedding gown and be ready for his return at an hour that she knew not. The groom did not know the day or hour that he would be coming for his bride, but only his father. And when his father um, told him to go get his bride, he would then come at an hour that was late, typically midnight during the uh, during the midnight hour. He would come and get his bride, and he would snatch her away. And the one thing that I learned the uh, the other day that I didn't even think of is how when the groom would come to get his bride, she would sit in um in a carriage and they would lift her off of the ground, which is a typology of the rapture. The bride is being lifted off the ground to be carried to the father's house where she would reside with him for eternity, forever. And they would celebrate their communion or their um their wedding for seven days. And so we can see a lot of the same events that are going to be happening in the rapture, in the tribulation, lasting for seven years, our feast for seven days. It's all the same. It's all the same. Now, I wanted to share another verse with you, and it's um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll start down in verse 5. This is where the people, when Paul was writing the uh, writing this book, um, the people back then were false teachers, and they were trying to scare the the new believers at the at that time, telling them that the rapture had already happened, and you know, causing confusion among the people. And so he's writing a letter to the people and and telling them, no, this is that's not what happened. So. In verse 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Do you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Satan's already working behind the scenes. But the one who now holds it back... Christ, God, he holds everything back, will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. So let's read that again and we'll kind of talk about it. Verse 7. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back, the restrainer, we are, we are being restrained and held back from prophecy and from tribulation beginning and from tribulation. Um, he's holding us back from the wrath. Um, we'll continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. So once the restrainer is gone, taken out of the way, then these things can be revealed. And then all hell can break loose. We are being restrained, family. We are being held back. And once the restrainer is gone, done. It all, you know, that's it. So... We can see, 
<laughs> we can see, you know, that yes, things look really bad right now. Things are horrible. Things are are just gearing up and we can see everything approaching and you know, I can see how sometimes it can get confusing and you think, gosh, are we in the tribulation right now? I mean, is is it already happening? Um but I can tell you we're not. We're not in the tribulation right now. We are not there yet. But we can see we can see almost like a glimpse behind the curtain of the tribulation. We can see the things that are going to be happening in the tribulation. Um, we can see the attitudes of people, their minds, their their games, their ploys, everything that's going to be happening. I can see even, um, you know, with people and the way that they behave, the way that they're so open to the idea of... Um, you know, testing and and giving over their free DNA test or whatever that thing is called, the COVID test. Um, They're just opening their homes and allowing people to come into their homes and getting tests. And they all just say, oh, it's just so great. As long as we find a cure, they're welcome in my home. They're so open to the idea of this. And it's, there's not going to be any, um, resistance you know when when it starts to come down to either get the chip or you don't work or get the chip or you're going to have to stay in your home there's not going to be any resistance because people are so blinded and they're so um they're believing the lie from satan himself that you know they're just going to go along with it and we can already see that happening but the restrainer is still here. He's still restraining everything and he's holding it back. And I know I've said this many, many, many times, but I'll say it again. Imagine you are a, you know, your parent and you're walking down the street with your child and you see danger coming. Your child is walking or in the street or they've stepped out into the street. You can see a bus coming. Are you going to snatch them out of the way and hold them back? from that danger or are you going to allow them to walk into the danger you love your kids right you're going to pull them back you're going to get them out of the way before destruction hits in the same way he is our loving father and he is holding his arm out holding us back from destruction from wrath from danger but once his arm is lifted we are being out of here we are being rescued we are being taken out of the way before destruction can hit. So I'll leave that with you guys. And and then next time we'll continue on in our revelation study. And then I think next time, next video, I have a few other articles I want to read, keep you guys updated on the, the events that are happening that are coming in so rapidly and so fast that I can't even keep up sometimes. But um, I want to share some new articles with you that I have found. I found a few videos that I think are just mind-boggling and I spoke of one of them in this video um so with that guys I love you and may you be richly blessed